That's a lovely accent you have. New Jersey? Austria. Austria! <laughs> well then, <laughs> good day, mate. Between 1994 and 2000, comedy was owned by the Farrelly brothers. The sibling writing directing duo made movies that were absurd, raunchy, juvenile, and undeniably hilarious. Their projects attracted big name talent, mostly cleaned up at the box office, and audiences, as well as some prominent critics, just couldn't seem to get enough. In fact, Every single movie the Farrelly's directed together during that period was considered a classic of its time. But then, times changed. Are you telling me that you were faking for 20 years? Uh-huh. And it was all just for a gag? Uh-huh. That's awesome! <laughs> I know! We'll get into it, but first, why not take a moment to subscribe to the Nerdstalgic channel? Peter and Bobby Farrelly were raised in Cumberland, Rhode Island, and were, in Bobby's words, classic underachievers. They did, however, discover a gift for writing and began creating screenplays together. The brothers got to work trying to make it as screenwriters and cranked out over a dozen screenplays. But by 1987, Bobby still had no officially produced writing credits, and Peter had just two minor ones. And while they earned a story by credit on the iconic Seinfeld episode, The Virgin, the brothers themselves weren't hired to write it. Instead, the Farrelly's went to work rewriting an incomplete script by legendary director John Hughes called Dumb and Dumber. A crude slapstick comedy with just enough heart, 1994's Dumb and Dumber was an anomaly at the time. Wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? The biggest comedies of the first half of the 90s were generally safe affairs, like Home Alone, Sister Act, and Mrs. Doubtfire. The Farrelly's, however, didn't really have a safe sense of humor. Where did you get 25 extra bucks? I sold some stuff to Billy and Forsy. The blind kid? <laughs> yeah. They also weren't interested in making smart aleck movies like Ghostbusters or Fletch, but the Farrelly's believed moviegoers were more likely to sympathize with characters they could comfortably look down on. And based on the results, they were right. Dumb and Dumber opened at number one and made almost $250 million worldwide on a $17 million budget. A lot of that was due to the presence of Jim Carrey, who had just appeared in his breakthrough hit Ace Ventura Pet Detective, and its massively popular follow-up, The Mask, both released earlier in the year. But whatever the cause, after a decade in the film business, the Farrelly's were an overnight success, and they were about to go on an unprecedented tear. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> 1996's bowling comedy Kingpin largely repeated Dumb and Dumber's raunchy, slapstick, dumb guys on a road trip formula, but still drew praise from both Siskel and Ebert. These guys have a real comic gift, and I can't wait to see your next film. It wasn't big at the box office, but it did well on video and would come to be considered a cult classic. What you doing there, Mr. Munson? Flossin'. Flossin'? Where'd I get Munson from? In any case, the next film would more than make up for the slow returns. In fact, 1998's There's Something About Mary would finish as the year's fourth highest grossing film. Sticking to the formula, the movie followed two dumb guys, had elements of a road trip, and was loaded with physical humor and gross-out gags. Always looking to outdo themselves, the Farrelly's would make their next film, 2000's Me, Myself, and Irene, even crasser and more chaotic. The movie wasn't quite as well received as its predecessor, but it was a box office hit. And as the new millennium began, the Farrelly brothers seemed pretty much unstoppable. Holy Jesus in heaven. It's a giant Q-tip. Hank! Well, I'm joking with the guy. Bring a little sunshine into his life. Careful, you'll peel. But if you've seen our video about the inevitable downfall of Judd Apatow comedy, then you already know that comedy in the aughts would firmly belong to the 40-year-old Virgin director and his creative crew. The Farrelly's were certainly still around and making movies, but suddenly, those movies weren't such a big deal anymore. On one level, the brothers were victims of their own success. After making four iconic comedies, their increasingly gross and formulaic humor just couldn't have the impact it once did, and their films started seeing diminishing returns. 2001's live-action animation hybrid Osmosis Jones, for example, was a massive bomb, making just $14 million on a $70 million budget. Critics largely enjoyed the animated parts, which the Farrelly's played no role in creating, but largely disliked the tonally inconsistent live-action material and its over-reliance on gross-out gags. What's that over there? 
At the same time, tastes were changing, and some of the more offensive stereotypes the Farrelly's relied on for laughs were increasingly seen as inappropriate. He hypnotized you so that really ugly girls that you met from then on would, to you, look like supermodels. What? They would experiment with a relatively gentler and more mainstream tone in 2001's Shallow Hal, but while it was a success, it's now mostly remembered for being offensive to people with weight issues, if at all. Oh, go on. In fact, the Farrelly's would spend the rest of the decade pumping out forgettable movies like Stuck on You, Fever Pitch, The Ringer, The Heartbreak Kid, Hall Pass, and The Three Stooges. Some of these films did okay commercially, but none of them connected with audiences the way the Farrelly's earlier efforts had. It seemed unlikely they were about to turn things around, but we'll never know for sure. Because in February of 2012, tragedy struck when Bobby's 20-year-old son, Jesse, died of an apparent overdose. My brother had a tragedy in his immediate family, a big one, and he had to step away. Mm. He was, uh, he needed time. You know, he just didn't want to, he needed space. And while he would participate in Dumb and Dumber 2, Bobby would otherwise leave Peter to his own devices. Peter's first solo outing did not, however, go great. In fact, his contribution to the comedy anthology movie 43 was so badly received, it was specifically named as one of the segments that earned the film that year's Razzie for Worst Picture. And Kate Winslet isn't gonna make a movie with a guy who's got uh, balls hanging off of his, his chin. <laughs> Not with that kind of thinking, no. His second effort, however, would fare slightly better. Peter would co-write, direct, and produce 2018's Green Book. The director would later state, This movie, it would have been better if my brother were involved. I'm telling you the truth. He always makes things better. I, it, I miss working with him. It's hard to imagine how it could have gone better. Despite generating some controversy over its light treatment of a heavy subject matter, Green Book won three Academy Awards, including the Oscar for Best Picture. This guy's saying Dr. Shirley can't eat. Yeah. Oh, well, I apologize, but these are long-standing traditions, club rules, I'm sure you understand. No, I do not understand. Peter would try his hand at comedy again with 2022's The Greatest Beer Run Ever, but reviews were mixed at best. Meanwhile, in 2023, Woody Harrelson would coax Bobby into directing a remake of the Spanish sports comedy Campiones, about a basketball coach forced to work with a team of developmentally disabled players. A longtime supporter of causes benefiting that part of the disabled community, Bobby saw the story as a hopeful and important one, but the movie unfortunately flopped. Whether their sense of humor simply isn't relevant anymore, or whether they're just not as capable of making funny movies without each other, the Farrelly brothers' absolute dominance of the box office is long behind them. We got no food, we got no jobs, our pets' heads are falling off! But there's no denying they left a lasting impression on the comedy landscape. The more controversial aspects of their work have been largely left in the past, but subsequent generations inherited the Farrelly's affection for dopey everyman being subjected to slapstick and gross-out gags. And as for the brothers themselves, they're not quite done. In 2023, they reunited to write and produce the forthcoming comedy Dear Santa, which stars Jack Black and is being directed by Bobby. Of course, we'd say the odds it will reach the heights of those early successes are about one in a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. So what do you think? Are you a fan of the Farrelly Brothers? And if so, which of their films are your favorites? Let us know down in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely find others you like if you check out the rest of the channel. As always, thank you for subscribing to Nerdstalgic.